This project is a tribute to our cat Dishka, which is my loyal companion in my lab. Because of this video, I discovered that many of my viewers are also beekeepers. Back then, I decided to start with beekeeping after my retirement. Great you YouTubers, here is the guy with a Swiss accent, with a new episode around sensors and microcontrollers. Feeding our beloved animals is a rewarding job. We do not want to forget it. So let's build a connected scale which alarms us when the food bin is empty. Of course, we will be able to use the same principle to measure the weight of any other good, like the honey in remote beehives or even our own weight to visualize it somewhere in the cloud. So today we will measure quite small weights with an Arduino-like microcontroller. We will need some tricks to do that. Then we will build a bowl for our cat which is capable to detect if no food is available anymore. And we will send a Twitter alarm to our smartphone. For measuring weight, we need three things. A sensor, a converter to make its signals digitally readable, and a microcontroller to control all the actions. The usual way to measure weight is with strain gauges. Strain gauges are relatively simple devices thin PCBs or carriers with copper traces. These PCBs are sensitive to all kinds of forces and change their resistance accordingly. If we stick such a strain gauge on a metal bar and apply a force to one end, the resistance of the copper traces increases or decreases depending on the direction of the force. That's all, in principle. You can imagine that the distances these gauges are extended are minimal if the forces are small. This is why we have to use some tricks. But we are tinkerers and engineers, and we love tricks to make things work. So the first trick is not to only place one strain gauge on the bar. We place two or better four of them on both sides of the bar. Trick number two is we weaken the rod that it bends easier. This can be done by drilling precise holes through the bar, right under the gauges. So with a defined force we get a bigger movement. And trick number three uses these two or four signals from the sensors and combine them in an interesting manner. It is called the Wheatstone Bridge because Sir Charles Wheatstone popularized this concept already in the 19th century. Its main advantage is its ability to measure resistors extremely accurate and it cancels temperature effects. This is exactly what we need here. So we combine our two or four gauges into such a bridge. Fortunately, we can buy such devices with everything mounted and connected for a few dollars. These bars are made for a particular weight for example, for 2, 5 or even 40 kilograms. And they are announced to be very precise. The colors of the wires seem somehow standardized. Red, black, green and white. If your sensor has different wire colors, you easily find which one is which if you search for the wires with the higher resistance between them. These are then the opposite wires. Now we should be able to see very small changes in voltage if we bend the metal bar. But these are really small voltages as we see here. If I bend the bar quite a lot, we only measure around 2 millivolt. Now we have a sensor to measure forces, not weight. Sir Isaac Newton, also an Englishman and also a long time ago, discovered a way to convert weight in forces and vice versa. This is what we will use now. Strain gauges usually have threaded holes on each side. I mount one of them to a base plate and make sure it can move a little down. For this prototype I use an old PCB which I found in my lab. Then I mount a bowl on the top of the opposite side. Like that the sensor is bent a little if I put cat food into the bowl and we should be able to measure a voltage created by this bending force. 
And now the star of this video enters the scene. She is called Dishka and is always hungry. Fortunately, she has long hair, so nobody sees her big belly. But even if she is hawkish, we have to measure her food in grams per day, not in kilograms. So our bowl has to be very sensitive. And this is why we need trick number four. A very sensitive and accurate analog to digital converter, also called ADC. And of course, this ADC should not cost more than the cat itself. Because these days everybody is interested in measuring weight. Such ADCs are produced in extremely high series. This makes it possible that we can buy a 24-bit ADC with a built-in amplifier for a dollar if we buy a few of them. Its name is HX711. Cool! We connect the top and the bottom wires, in my case black and red, to the E plus and E minus pins, and the other two to A plus and A minus. The B plus and B minus pins are not used. Here you could connect a second strain gauge. Now we only have to decide on the microprocessor and search for a library. If we want to use an Arduino Uno, we find a few libraries which work fine. We only have to connect 5V, ground, clock and data to the respective pins, load the example sketch and are ready to go. We already see some values and if I press the bowl, we see the values moving. As always with scales, we first have to zero the device and then we have to calibrate it using a known weight. But wait! We want it also to get a tweet if the bowl is empty. So we need a connected device. And because the newest kit on the block is an ESP32, I will use one of these new boards with an OLED display. So let's check if the library works also with this new processor. The only thing we have to do is to adapt the data and the clock pins to the pins of the ESP32. I use pin 25 and 26. The HX711 also runs on 3.3V, so no problem. The sketch runs like a charm. But wait, from time to time we see outliers. Not good. What is the problem? As always with intermittent problems, finding the root cause is not easy. But because we know that it worked with the Arduino Uno, we can suspect that it could have to do with the higher speed of the ESP32. Speed is not always good. If we look at the timing of the two signals, we see that the shortest signal is a little more than 100 nanoseconds. And if we look at the datasheet, we see that this is too fast for the chip. Its minimum time has to be more than 200 nanoseconds. Usually, we can add a few delays here and there to fix this issue. Not so here, because the library uses the shift in command, which reads 8 bits in a row without intervention possibility. And here we have 3 shift in commands to read all 24 bits in a row. So the easiest way to solve this problem is to slow down the ESP chip itself. The ESP32 is a very fast chip and we can afford to slow it down for this application. Slowing down the ESP 32 is quite easy. Just include a library and add this command at the beginning of the sketch. Then our ESP32 runs with only 80 MHz and the signal is now three times longer. Much better for the HX711. Now the outliers disappeared. Unfortunately, the serial speed as well as the Wi-Fi communication is not influenced. Thank you, Espressive. The whole prototype is based on the example file of the HX711 library. You find the links in the description. Next, I make sure the OLED shows the values. This is very comfortable. Even if the compiler warns us, the library works with the ESP32. Now we have a nice setup to test the accuracy of our bowl. The calibration commands are included in the sketch. Please uncomment it the first time you use it. First, this routine adjusts the sensor to zero and then waits for a defined weight to be added to the bowl. 
at the end, we take this number and divide it by the weight itself. The resulting number has to be keyed in here. Because Dishka is not interested in grams, I use cat food for calibration. I counted 50 pieces and enter 50 as a calibration value. Now the scale is ready to count the pieces and we can comment these lines. The empty bowl really shows zero pieces. And if I add one piece, it shows one. If I add a second, it shows two and so on. This is very astonishing for me. First, because the food pieces were really small and light. And second, because I did not do anything against electric interference. In contrary, I used much too long wires. Anyway, the device is ready to show it to the cat. As with all models, she had to starve a little before her appearance. Not to fit into the slim clothes, but to be hungry enough to eat from this new bowl. The next step is now to connect our ESP32 to the Wi-Fi network and to add the PubSub MQTT library, which works also with the ESP32. And because I already have a Raspberry Zero running Mosquito and Node Red, I easily can connect my new cat bowl with this system. If you do not know how to set up a Raspi for this purpose, you can watch video number 126. Because my bench light is also connected to my MQTT broker, I could now switch my work light off for a moment if Dishka emptied her bowl. But we said we want a tweet. To achieve this, we add an MQTT receiver node to Node Red and make sure it receives only the actual number of remaining pieces in the bowl. Then we add a switch node to make sure the tweet is only sent if less than 4 bytes are in the bowl. A trigger which makes sure the tweet is not sent too often. And a Twitter node to connect to Twitter. Done. Now I get alarmed if poor Dishka is hungry. And we can continue with her favorite activity. Catching a big straw. You see, the curtain is already destroyed because we have to do this very often. Summarized, we were able to build a connected bowl for our cat Dishka. She never will be hungry again. We learned that we can use thin PCBs with copper traces glued on a metal bar to precisely measure forces and weight. That we have to use two or even four such sensors in a Whitson bridge to make sure we get the required sensitivity and also compensate for temperature drift. That we can buy such ready-made sensors for a few dollars. We can buy an accurate HX711 module and connect it to either an Arduino or an ESP microprocessor. Because the timing was too fast for the HX711 chip, we had to slow down our ESP32. Fortunately, serial and Wi-Fi still worked after that. Next, we added MQTT to connect Dishka's bowl to my small home automation server. Fortunately, the PubSub library also works with the ESP32. And finally, we added a new flow to Node Red to enable sending a tweet if the bowl gets emptied. Now, the cat is happy and we just have to print a 3D case. I hope you are also happy and this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, then like. Bye.